Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Fine Longest Palindromes for the skeleton section of Module 2, and we're back to regular skeletons. So render phone number can be a mildly distant memory, and it'll come up later, like... Well, let's not even speculate about what that's like. But anyway, Fine Longest Palindrome is an excellent use case for a skeleton, because as you'll see, there are a lot of different things that we're going to do in this function, but we can separate those out into separate functions and make it much easier for us to work with. So. Uh, similar to the previous problem, there's a concept here that will be new to you. Ideally, the solution will use a native method built into your language called dot sort. So let's have a look at that. So essentially, sort method sorts the elements of an array in place and returns the sorted array. In place just means that it's not creating a new array, it's actually going to be manipulating the array itself. So, array dot sort, and it can possibly take something called a compare function. It specifies a function that defines the sort order, is what a compare function does. So if we scroll down here, a compare function is going to look something like this. And if we look at our code, we have one of those. Sort ascending by length is a pre-built function that will sort values by length in an ascending fashion, which is to say that it's going to sort those, uh, the shortest things are going to be at the front, and the longest uh, items will be at the end of the array. So we don't have to write this. This is written for us, and it models what a compare function does. So if you think about it, a compare function based on this syntax right here is what we pass to dot sort. So eventually we'll call sort with sort ascending by length. And at that point, hopefully we'll have an array of palindromes. It will sort them ascending by length. And then we can just grab the one that is longest based on our sort. So same thing, assertion functions to be used in test cases. We are going to write those for this. So let's go over here. We'll get rid of this, clear all that up. Okay, so is palindrome there's a function. We're not going to test sort ascending by length, just because that's that's unnecessary. Um, is palindrome says uh, so that is palindrome should give you a hint that this is going to be a boolean function. So that's going to return a, a boolean value. Reverse string is going to take in a string and reverse it, so that'll return a string. So we have a boolean and a string as our return values. Then find longest palindrome is going to return the largest item in a sorted list from a sentence. So it's going to be strings. So it looks like assert equal is going to be our best bet. So we're going to say function assert equal. And we're going to relax while we're writing this because we've done it so much. Actual expected test name. We're going to directly compare actual and expected. In the event that it's true, we're going to console.log passed. Else, we're going to console.log that we failed. Well, we didn't fail, the test failed. Plus the test name. We're going to close the brackets around the test name. We're going to say what we expected with quotes around it. Comma, but got, quotes to begin the actual value, plus, and then ending quotes around the actual value. So for our test cases, here's what we're going to do. If we want to find out if a word is a palindrome, we'll probably want to pass it a palindrome and not palindrome. So we'll say variable palindrome test is equal to, hmm, a lot of times you'll get stuck on problems like this trying to do things like think of a bunch of palindromes. But the fun part about that is that it doesn't really care if they're words or not. So what we can do is we can create a palindrome literally is just a palindrome. We don't need that to be a word. Palindrome, or we'll say non-palindrome test. And that's equal to uh, reticulated. Sure, why not? I'm not sure how to use spell that or if it's a word, but again, it doesn't matter because provided it's not a palindrome, we did it correctly. And what we're going to do is call both of those and say a variable, uh, mm, what should we call this one? Palindrome test result. It'd be nice if this said palindrome instead of palindrome. Uh, palindrome test result is going to be is palindrome called on palindrome test. And then we'll make a call to assert equal with our palindrome test result. It should be true. And it should return true 
when input is a palindrome. Nice and clean. And then for our second one, we'll say variable non palindrome test result. is equal to is palindrome. We're going to call this on what do we call this on? Non palindrome test. Cert equal. Boy, that's a really bad variable name now that I think about it. That's okay though. To have a variable name be bad, honestly it has to be something like A or like BA, or something that is completely nondescript. If it's too long, that's not that big of a deal. In fact, it can come in very uh, very handy later on. So, assert equal non-palindrome non test result. It's really difficult to misinterpret what that is, though. And then should return false when input is not a palindrome. Excellent. Now that we've got that, next one we might want to do is reverse string. Now, reverse string might not need as many tests. And since we're feeling kind of lazy, as we always are, we're not going to put that many tests for this one. So for reverse string, let's say variable result of reverse is equal to reverse string. And let's, re what kind of string should we reverse? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Excellent choice. And then we'll say assert equal result of reverse result of reverse should be B, I uh, know, not B, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. And test name should be, should return the input string reversed. Okay, now that we've got that, find longest palindrome is the last one. So we'll say variable result of find longest is going to be equal to a string, and it should have uh, some words in it. So we'll say uh, A, cute race car went down to um, I crack um, that's not a good one we'll say tet to tet s to sets excellent so this is a palindrome this is a palindrome this is a palindrome and so is this and theoretically, if we were to run this, we want to make sure um, variable. Uh, let's just call it right here. We'll say find longest palindrome, and we'll just pass that directly in there rather than creating its own variable. So we'll say go, eh, and then assert equal is going to take in the result of find longest. Finding longest should be s t e t t e t s. And then should return the longest palindrome. Okay. Let's have a quick look at this. Um, okay, looks okay, looks pretty good. So we've got a test for palindrome, a test for reverse string, and a test for find longest palindrome. So now let's go ahead and jump up to uh, well, let's start with reverse string. Reverse string seems to be, uh, it seems to be the case that this hint is wanting us to use reverse string um, in is palindrome. So we probably want to use reverse string first. So, unfortunately, there is no method that just would say like string not reverse. However, there is a method that we can use on an array that'll reverse it. So essentially, our methodology here is going to be uh, split string into an array, reverse the array, join the reversed array back into a string, return that string. Okay, so variable split is equal to, well, we'll say split string is equal to string dot split on nothing. Reverse that array. Hmm. Might want to put something in this variable name to in in indicate that it's an array. To me, that indicates that it's an array because that's what happens when you split a string. But you may want to say something like uh, split string array or something. Anyway, we're going to say uh, reversed 
split string is equal to split string dot reverse. Join the reverse array back into a string. Variable result string, we'll say reversed string, is equal to reversed split string dot join. And then return that string. Return reversed string. Okay, so we want to test that, and that doesn't say assert equal. All right, we want to test this one, but we don't really care about what happens with the other ones. So we should see passed, and we should see failed. Should return the input is not a palindrome. Should return false when input is not a palindrome. Um, well, we might have some issues there. Well, let's just run and see what happens. Oh boy, non dash palindrome unexpected token dash. Did I just lose my head and forget that you can't use dashes as part of your palindrome? Uh, I did. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Palindrome, should return the palindrome. Unexpected. Hmm. Unexpected token, parentheses. So, where are, they, where are they saying this? 83, no, on 60. Assert equal, var, this is not gonna help anybody. Okay, hopefully we've gotten rid of most of the errors. Reference error, non is not defined. Yep. Result of reverse is not defined. Where do they want that? 56, 56, result of reverse. So I copying and pasting your variable names once you make them a little bit verbose can be a very good idea. Okay, cool, so we failed. Uh, should return true for palindrome, should return false for palindrome, and along is palindrome, but we passed our reverse string. So sweet, so reverse string now works, excellent. So for palindrome to work, we can detect palindrome by comparing a string to its reverse. Easy peasy. Return word. Ooh, we do have an issue though. We want to make sure that the word is ignoring case. So if that's the case, in order for that to happen, we're gonna to need to say word is equal to word dot to lower case. We'll change it to lower case first, and then we'll say word uh, is equal to reverse string called on word. So return word is equal to a reverse string. So that's going to sort out everything that we need for is palindrome. So if we run this one, we should be starting to narrow down the number of tests that are failing. So with palindrome tests have uh, passed. One of the other things that you'll see some people do from time to time, and by some people I mean, I think I did this, was add in the test name as part of the passing string. And what this is gonna do is if we run this, we passed should return true when the input is a palindrome. We pass that other test to return false when input is not a palindrome. And now as, I mean, there are some people who look at this and say that it's a little bit uh, verbose. It can be difficult to find this failed portion. Another one of those arguments where there are good points on both sides. If you had 500 of these tests, you might even not want passed. You might just want like a green dot or something and then a red dot with an explanation if something failed. However, there are there is reason to suggest that if you can list out what it is that you're passing versus what you're failing, you can get a good sense of what parts of the code require additional work and what parts are complete. So reverse string is all sorted out, is palindrome is all sorted out. Now we want to think about find longest palindrome. Split sentence into words. Variable words is equal to sentence dot split on a space. We'll assume that the sentence coming in is text. We'll assume that all the text is separated by spaces. Iterate words and collect the palindromes. So, I'm just gonna create a, an array called palindromes. I'm gonna set it equal to an empty array. And then going to create a for loop and it's going to iterate over the words. And then if is palindrome on the current word, then I wanna push that word to palindromes. Flush. Anyway, 
push words at I. And this might be another time for a test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to console.log palindromes. And I just want to see if, because I, I know what I'm passing into this, right? It's the cute race car went down to I statistics. And so what I want is I want an array that has A, race car, I, and statistics. So if we run, we're going to see our tests. And then we're going to find out that we made an error. Is palindrome is not defined. I disagree. Is palindrome is totally defined. Function is palindrome. Function is palindrome. Yep, it sure isn't. Okay. Is palindrome, not palindrome. So let's run that one. Palindromes is not defined. Boy, I really don't like that end, do I? Palindromes. Okay. I didn't even spell it in the console.log correctly. Palindromes, although it wasn't really caring about that because it's a string. I race car I statets. Excellent. We are in great shape. Although not about how to spell palindromes, apparently. Sort the list of palindromes by word length. Now, this is one of those cool ones where it's like, sort is kind of cool because we're not even really going to need to assign it to anything. It actually changes the array in place. Oh, I think it does, right? Yeah, it does. Return on the sorted array. Note the array is sorted in place and no copy is made. Okay, so I think that usually means that, um, well, here's what we'll do. We're going to put another console.log of the palindromes, and then we're going to call sort on the palindromes. We'll say palindromes.sort, and then we're going to pass to sort the compare function, which, if you recall, is sort ascending by length. It's a higher order function, so we don't call it, which is to say we don't call it because what it's looking for is the definition of the compare function, so we just list the name of the function rather than calling it using parentheses like that. So, palindromes.sort, sort ascending by length. Now let's console.log palindromes sorted afterwards. So let's run this. We see palindromes, and then we see them sorted. Excellent. Now we want the largest item in the list. If they're ascending, meaning they're going from lowest to highest, we want the last value. So, a couple of ways to do this. We could call pop and return that, or we could return the length minus one. I like using pop. So we'll say return palin drones dot pop and run that and everything passed let's go ahead and get rid of our console.logs and be careful not to get rid of our sort we'll comment that out comment that out run that everything passed so we're in good shape let's go ahead and highlight everything and bring it on back here paste this in here and again, most of what we're doing here is superfluous. What we just did on Replit is most of what you should get out of this lesson. Once we run the tests, we will have a little bit of extra confirmation, which is always nice. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.